All right, I'm about to bring my three children, five, three, and one and a half, almost one and a half, inside Goodwill. I haven't done a thrift with me in a long time, mainly because it's hard to operate the camera when I have kids with me, which is like all the time, <laughs> obviously. So hopefully I can like piece together the little bits of thrifting that I can capture for you guys. And after that, I will show you the haul. before I get to the thrift with me part of the video which is just gonna be pretty much a voiceover of me going through a portion of the racks that I searched through today I wanted to do a quick story time because as soon as I got in there I realized pretty much right away that there were two other resellers clothing resellers I'm guessing um, and they obviously had a huge advantage over me because aside from the fact that they got there before I did they had no children, they were completely childless. So I knew right away that they had the advantage and my, I mean, my three-year-old had already had a meltdown before we even made it inside the store. So as soon as I got there, I was ready to walk out. But I'm glad I didn't because I actually started on the opposite side of the store as them so that I wouldn't be just looking through like everything that they left over. And there were a couple new racks that were rolled out that I was able to look through first. So I did find a few good things. But I did also wanna say, a lot of people on Instagram, I've been very open about the fact that I have to go sourcing with my children. I'm a stay-at-home mom, this is literally my job, this is what I do. I don't have the luxury of having somebody watch them every time I go thrifting either, I wish I did. But a lot of people will ask me on Instagram, like, how do you do it, what's the trick? I don't know, like, I don't have any tricks, I don't have any answers, I struggle through it, bringing, a year old, a one year old, a three year old and a five year old, all boys, all really active to the thrift store is not easy. Any way you look at it, there's never a trick that I have that solves it. I've tried bringing their iPads with me, um, hooking them up through the Bluetooth or the um, hotspot on my phone so they can watch YouTube on their iPads. I've tried snacks, I've tried toys, it just doesn't work. So today, if you're wondering where they are in the video, they're actually right at my feet. They were fighting and arguing about a keychain. I gave them each a little keychain to play with and they started arguing over it. It was a massive show. It was not fun. So that is my answer. I don't have a secret. I don't know how I do it. There are times when I get home after a thrift, a thrift stop with my kids and I have like tunnel vision and my blood pressure is like through the roof because I'm so stressed. I don't know how I do it. Sometimes they're easier than others. Like sometimes I can go to the thrift store for 30 minutes and they're all fine. But this time we were there for about an hour and I got in the car and I was sweating and I wanted to go home. I was like on the verge of tears. They were pretty naughty. So um, that's my answer to that. So thrifting with young children, there's there's no secret. It's, it's a struggle. Um, if you're one of the lucky few who have children who can entertain themselves, good for you. Mine definitely can't figure, they just can't entertain themselves at all yet. And they're also really young. So I just had to get that off of my chest because I know I've done a lot of videos. I've capped like letting you guys know that I have children and I have to, you know, interrupt my videos sometimes because of them. And you guys have all been really understanding about it, but I just wanted to let you guys know before this video, um, yeah, there are no secrets. So here's the voiceover. And after the voiceover, I'm just going to do the haul. So when I'm sourcing shoes, I'm definitely not a shoe expert, but I try to keep my eye out for fancy dress heels, boots, and clogs. I try to stay away from sandals and flats if I can. I found these Blowfish booties and Blowfish is a really good brand for me. Pretty, I think every single Blowfish shoe that I've listed sold. I haven't listed hundreds or anything, but I've listed a good handful and they all sold. So, obviously, you guys watched the first part of this video. I was in a hurry going through the racks this time. Typically with my voiceovers or my thrift with me videos, I like to show you guys the brand like the tag labels a little bit better than I did this time but it was really hard operating the camera 
sifting through the racks and trying to talk down my children who were at my feet. I should probably specify with the blowfish booties, I don't sell them for like $50 or anything, but they sell around the $20 to $25 price point. So if I'm not paying more than like $6 for them, which is on the higher end of what I'd like to pay, then I definitely pick them up if they're in good condition. They don't retail for hundreds of dollars or anything, but they're just one of those brands that people trust and love. This was a Banana Republic, which the print or the pattern really caught my attention right away. And Banana Republic is a hit or miss brand. I don't always pick it up, but it does well for me sometimes. It's just a bread and butter brand. Um, it's been around forever. Everybody knows about it. But that one happened to be a Banana Republic outlet or factory which I try to stay away from unless it's like new with tags or something super exceptional. And that piece was just meh. Although that electric blue is a really good color. I've noticed it's pretty popular. Brings in lots of attention. I always find so much pink. And... Two or three years ago, I would have picked up every Victoria's Secret pink item that I could find, but it's more saturated now. This is a Young and Reckless graphic top, which I actually ended up bringing home with me. It's a solid seller. It kind of falls into the same category where you would think of like Obey, Vans, Converse. It's just a solid seller. I'm not going to get much out of it, but I'll probably list it for $15 or $20. go figure i feel like most of the good items that i found this trip were pretty much as soon as i put the camera down <laughs> so you'll see a lot more in the haul this is a project runway top which i looked up the comps on they were like all over the place i mean sometimes they sold for as low as eight dollars but i really like the colors on that one like that contrast stripe color with the tie front. It's really trendy right now. And I'm guessing because Project Runway kind of runs, obviously it's like a seasonal show. I'm guessing that is something that isn't available anymore. I'm not sure if it would have sold out. I don't really know how that works. I've never come across a Project Runway brand, but I'll probably start it around 15 to 20. I kind of want to look into it more. This is a Life is Good graphic top. It's a newer label. I was going to get this one, but I ended up putting it back. Although it was really cute. Life is Good is also a bread and butter brand for me. It definitely depends on the graphic. This I also put in my cart and ended up putting back later just because I've been sitting on a few pieces of pink team apparel. So I don't want to take chances anymore with that. So I am steaming everything. If you guys aren't familiar with my inventory prep, I do steam everything that I get. Um, mainly for presentation, but also because it just makes the item feel fresh and new, again, at least to me. And it's also a really good time to check for flaws that I may have missed in the store or snip off extra threads and stuff like that. I take everything individually and I steam it in my shower room. That's just what I prefer. Right, so everything has been steamed. This is definitely a different haul than what I'm used to. It's kind of like an eclectic haul. That's the best way I can explain it. But I have everything organized by style too. So I'm just going to start. This is a Victoria's Secret. Um, I don't know the name of this type of lingerie, but it has these little garment straps at the bottom. Um, leopard print is trendy right now, so I will probably list this around $25. I found, oh, I found this Vince tank top, which I'm just going to keep for myself. It's not really worth reselling because it's just like an under top. This is a loft. 
tank top or sleeveless blouse. I guess I would call this a sleeveless blouse. But this is one of those brands, again, I didn't just pick it up for the brand. I usually leave a loft behind. But this feels really new and it has this really cute keyhole back. And I don't know, I just couldn't leave this one behind. It really caught my eye. So I'll probably list that one around $16. This is my first time finding this brand. I don't know how to pronounce it either. Magashoni. Um, it had really good comps online. It's just a really cute sleeveless blouse. It feels like, I don't know, it feels like wool. But it is missing one of these beads at the back, which I'm not too worried about because it's just a plain, like, black rounded bead. I think I can find something similar and replace it. This is a higher end brand, so it's definitely worth the repair. I also found this moth, really long tunic tank top. This is really heavy. It's in really good condition and it has like this metallic shimmer to the outside. I'll probably list this around $20 as well. I found this Billabong top. So Billabong, it's one of those brands that's, I mean, it used to be like really hot, you know, when everybody shopped at PacSun but it's kind of died down since then as far as like being on the top trends but i really like this like striped dye poncho style shag top unfortunately it has a little bit of like stress over here i'm just going to try to do a couple of small repairs where i just take like a navy thread and kind of reinforce this other than that i'll probably list it around 15 to 20 dollars because i will have to list it as repaired but Billabong's still a good brand to pick up. Um, obviously, they're newer styles. They still sell for me. They still sell well. This is a vintage denim blouse button-up. I picked this up because it has this like dis distressed raw hemming at the bottom. It's not actually raw. It is folded over, but it looks raw. Um, there was like a patch that was here, maybe like a workers' union patch. I don't know. But other than that, it's really cute. I rolled up the sleeves because I think that really complements the style. Um, I don't know. It's not anything crazy exceptional, but I haven't really found anything like this where it's just a short sleeve button up denim blouse. So I'll probably list it at $25. See how it does at that price. You guys saw this one on the video. I didn't realize until I steamed it that it actually is new with tags. So it actually tells me the retail price right there and 2017. Um, so retails for 37 obviously I'm probably gonna list it around 20 here is an obey top I think yeah I'm guessing this is men's I think let's see small so yeah this is probably a men's I'll probably list this around $20 I found this vintage <laughs> 90s really bright tropical button-up top um, I find lots of vintage tropical stuff I I leave it behind most of the time just because there's so much of it. I don't know if it's like just my area, but this just has this really bright primary color look to it. So I'll probably list this, list this around $30. I also found this Eileen Fisher cardigan. I always kick myself for buying Eileen Fisher because I have been sitting on a lot of her pieces for really reasonable prices, but I just can't leave it behind. This is a really nice cardigan. I'll probably list around $25. This is a J. Crew Factory, which I usually try not to pick up, but I just love this really cute beading at the top. I actually found one just like this, except in a different color, and I kept it for myself. This one had like an area of discoloration, but I actually was able to remove it. I'll probably list this around $20 as well. I think I can get a cute cover shot for this one, like on a flat lay. Obviously that probably didn't retail for much new, but I just really like this beading at the top. I feel like it's really versatile. I also found this Theory sweater with these chunky thick stripes. It has this really deep v-neck that I like. I'll probably list this one at 30, which seems a little bit high, but it is 100% wool. I'll see what it does at that price, and if I have to price drop it, I'm fine with that. I also found this Maeve. I'm guessing this is Anthropology. I could be wrong. I'll probably check the style. Um, I just really like this pattern. I would have picked it up regardless because Maeve is a good brand to pick up, especially their dresses. 
but this I'll probably list for around $35 as well, which again seems kind of high um, just for a dress. I really like to keep my prices reasonable considering everything is obviously used, but I think this um, has a higher price point at retail value. Oh, and this pink, this is just a long sleeve top, but I really like this burgundy. It has a little dog logo and the sleeve has a logo as well, which is pretty popular to have that chunky kind of campus font on the sleeve. I find a lot of pink around me and I leave 90% of it behind. I actually found a few of these pink long sleeve tops all in the small size, very similar condition, very similar style, but this was the only one I picked up because if it doesn't sell, I'm probably just gonna keep it for myself, but other than that, I'll list it around $15. So yeah, not a crazy profit, but it'll bring people to my closet. This Bowden dress, I was really excited to find. I love Bowden, I love their prints. Their bold prints are more popular. And in the store, I realized it has these very light bleach specks on it. Um, but it's just a smaller area and the farther you stand from it, obviously they start to, they're not as noticeable. So because of the flaws, I'll probably list this one for $20. I also picked up this Tahari dress. I really love this ribbed sleeve. And then it has, of course, the decorative zipper pockets at the front. This I picked up because of the fabric content, which is of course 100% extra fine merino wool. If it weren't for that, I probably wouldn't pick up this just because I've been sitting on some Tahari pieces although it is a good brand um, it's just it hasn't been a quick seller for me personally but I think this will do well I think I'll list it around $35 because it is a special material I also found this Athleta I tried so hard to get this um, this label steamed out but I'll just take an iron to it just to make it look more flattened out I hate wrinkled labels it's like a pet peeve of mine this is a really pretty royal blue dress. I found this exact same dress in the exact same size, which is a pretty unique size, extra, extra small, about two weeks ago, but I found it in a different color. So I'm guessing the same person donated both of them. But I don't remember what I said I'd list the other one for. I think maybe like $25. Kind of have to look up the style on that one. I found this soft surroundings. It's like a burnt rust colored short sleeve sweater i just really i love soft surroundings personally if i can find their pieces i pick them up um their outerwear their heavier like sweaters and dresses and coats and jackets those do those do well i think i sold something similar to this that was in black for around 30 dollars so I'll probably list this one for $30 as well. Maybe a little bit higher depending on the style. I think this is just really cute. Maybe $35. I'm really excited to stumble across this Garnet Hill trench, which I'm going to list as a spring trench. It really is. It's more like a spring jacket. Um, but yeah, this is in really good condition. It's 100% cotton. This is just one of those brands that has a, a pretty decent size following. Um, it doesn't retail for hundreds of dollars new or anything. But because of the style, because it's, I can list spring as, um, as a nice tag, I'll probably list this one around $45. Okay, so moving on to the just two bottoms and then two men's graphic tees. Actually, I had three because I mixed the Obey top in my, in my women's category. Oops. Um, so I found these Can Can stretchy pants, which... I found Can Can before and I looked up the comps and it wasn't crazy so I left it behind but there were a couple people I think maybe on Instagram who were talking about Can Can jeans so I was like I'm gonna give it a shot. Um, these are just plain black which is I got two completely different sizes um, and this one's more of like a faux denim stretch material where this one's just almost it feels like complete spandex. So that was just chance that was just um, luck if you want to call it luck. I don't really know the comps on Can Can, but these are pretty basic, so I'll be happy if I can get $15 to $20 um, a piece for them. I found this awesome Walt Disney World coral, which of course is a very trendy color. I'll probably list this for $20. Oh, and it is Disney Parks, so I think it was something that had to be purchased at the parks. So you know it was a pretty penny new. 
I found this Young and Reckless top, which I also talked about in the video. So moving on just to two more things. I found these BOC, which I find a lot of near me. These flats are like a faux snakeskin. I I personally love this brand, but there's just so much of it, I never pick it up. But these are actually size 11 and bigger sizes do well. It's a harder size to find, so I'll probably, and I just love this faux snakeskin. So I'll probably list these around $25 to start and see how they do. You guys also saw these in the video. Um, I talk about blowfish, so I'll probably list these around $25 to start as well and see if I get any offers. So that is my haul. Like I said, it is definitely an eclectic haul. Um, usually when I'm looking at my rack of soon to be listed inventory, it kind of, I don't wanna say matches, but it kind of has like a, a general style to it. But this one's really all over the place, which I actually love. It's gonna be really fun to list all this stuff. So as always, if you guys don't follow me on Instagram, that's how I discovered the reseller community. It's honey.rags. And from there, there is a link tree to all of my platforms that I sell on, or at least almost all of them, most of them. So as always, thank you for watching and happy selling.